Hey, this is Glenda with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions. The title of this segment, Not Thinking Big, is the reason some people are not successful. I was just chilling and I was working today, working on some stuff, put up a new blog post that will be down there. And I was just looking at the comments of my latest video. There's this guy who's just got a heart on for me. And I didn't really go at him. And I want to say some of uh, the viewers, some of my uh, subscribers have gone after him and kind of got back and forth with him. You know, I want to say thanks. You know, I, I, it's nice to know your folks have your back. But I let it go for a reason. Because there's a lot of stuff he said that doesn't make sense about himself. Number one, he has two successful businesses. And I looked at that and I heard that. And he, he has a lot of time to come on here and go back and forth with people and get in it with people. When I had my one successful business, I didn't have time to come on YouTube. If I was on YouTube, I was watching the video, I was in and out. I did not interact. I did not join the community because I did not have the time. When you have your own business, you are working your ass off. And for him to have two successful businesses and to be out there picking and going to flea markets, I don't understand where all that time is if, you know, if you've got these businesses. Also, he's like, the storage auction thing is over. Uh, storage auctions being over is pretty much like gas is being over when the price gets to five dollars. People are gonna bitch and moan and they're gonna cut back, but guess what? They're gonna still buy gas because that's the way it is. Um, and I also looked at the video again, and there was a lot of stuff that he was bringing up that I addressed. I didn't say go. I didn't say go out there and just spend money recklessly. I said go out and observe the mayhem. Because this is going to pass. It's going to pass. And then if you're out there now, when it gets better, you're going to be like, whoa. But if you go out there, because see, this is the thing. Because I snuck out to an auction. And, oh, my God. It was freaking comedy. Uh, the rooms were garbage. And it's tax season. That's normal. I tried not to go out this time of year. But I would go out in case something popped up. But I pre-bought my inventory because I knew this crap was happening. I knew it comes Every year, like clockwork, there's only a difference of a week or so, then it's on. People are coming in your store. They have the little bank envelopes full of hundreds. It's tax season. New people are coming out. This happens every year. Next year, it's going to happen again. Then the year after, it's going to happen again. But if you do not pay your dues, and uh, Castle and Addicts, uh, he put out a really good video about buying your education. And I fully agree with everything he said. I put so much in fact that I put it on the blog because this is what a lot of people don't want to hear. You could work hard for a long time and not make a lot of money building a business. Yes, that's the truth. Uh, in my book, I've had five businesses before. I was in the military when I had four of them. And you know, I was cutting grass. I don't even count the stuff in high school, but I had four of them when I was in the military. So even though I was losing my ass money-wise, I had an income coming in. But I bought my education because I fucked up. You're going to learn more from fucking up than you are from your biggest successes. Because when you are successful, you kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that feels good. And you relax a little bit. You lose your edge a little bit because success is nice. It's seductive. It's like that pretty chick that's walking your way and she's saying, I'm going to do you, big boy. And means it. That's success. So, understand. Fucking up, making mistakes, losing money, that's part of the game. I do not know one person who is successful that it was just like, doo, 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 doo. there it is. I mean, like, you know, let's talk about Bill Gates. Bill Gates went through hell. Everyone's like, yeah, Bill Gates. Dude went through more lawsuits than some small district attorneys in small towns lawsuits, infringements, bad press. There was a lot of stuff. And everybody just kept like looking at the money. Dude was going through hell. It was worth it, but he was going through hell. Also, another point about giving back. Let me just put it to you gently. Anyone that has something of true value that is not in love with you, is not some type of charitable endeavor, or the person's not trying to be a mentor to you because they see something special into you, is some bullshit. It took me years to learn how to do this stuff. 
proof. Here's some proof for you. Uh, and it was another, uh, well, you know, Glendon, like, yeah, like, he got out the business because, you know, I'll say it. There's a lot of you out there that think I'm full of shit. It's like, yeah, he got out the business. He made money. Now he's selling the book to the suckers. Ha ha, but I'm not going to buy it because it's over. See, this is how I know that the educational system in this country is fucked up. If I was still in the business, would I come out and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to be my competition? Why would I do that? That makes no sense whatsoever. If I didn't, if I hadn't gotten sick, I, this, this, none of this would have happened. I would still be out there with the guys, bitching and moaning, running folks up because I was forced out the business due to the illness. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, couldn't do shit, was tired, was depressed. I mean, it was a freaking effort to go up a flight of stairs. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's kind of scary that you can't walk up a flight of stairs or you get out of a chair and you were completely out of breath. That's some scary shit. So I was sat down and during the interim, I was just like writing. That's pretty much all I could do. But I started writing again. And oh yeah, if you're going to say something about me do your own fucking research. Put Glendon Cameron in Google. I've got like 20 freaking pages of info. My first internet reference is Timbuktu, and there's a page of stuff I wrote in like 1999. So for those folks who's like, well, you know, he's just decided this writing thing. No, that's something I wanted to do. And actually, it's turned out really to be nice because, yeah, I make a lot of money doing this. Sitting going, no, no, no. I'm not the struggling writer. I'm not. <laughs> the shit blew up. Why? Because I know how to set up and run businesses. Why? Because I did it not once, not twice, not three times, but nine freaking times. The first five phew, were some fucked up dry runs. But you know, number six, seven, eight, nine were lovely. Why? Because I bought my experience. You're not, so many of you want to just get out there and bam, 10 grand a month. I'm going to tell you why that's the worst thing in the world for you. If you get that type of success really quick, you're going to fuck it up because your mind, it, it can't handle it. Look at all these stars like Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Logan, all these people who have really a great life, but because it's so much and there's so much stress and pressure, they're doing drugs. They're stealing. They're doing kind of crazy stuff. You think that you that won't be you? Fact. 90% of lottery millionaires are broke within five years. Many of these people are getting money, more money in a few days than they've made in a lifetime. And they can't handle it because in this country, we've got some really fucked up notions about money. Like only evil people get rich. Uh, rich people are evil. Money's bad. No, it's your mentality. That's what's bad. Money is a tool. It does nothing good. It does nothing bad. It's the person behind the money. So there's this little, you know, there's like a nobility in poverty. I've been poor. I live in a boarding house with freaking crackheads walking around doing tricks in the back. That shit wasn't noble. So the whole deal is there's a certain amount of dues paying that you've got to go through. It's unavoidable. You can't get around it. You can try, but it will catch up with you. So take your time. Enjoy the journey. Love your family. And if you stick with this long enough, you will be successful. Will you have my level of success? Who knows? You may do better than I did. Because one of the things that really pissed me off about this is when I started doing it, and I would, you know, people were buying an ebook and they were sending me pictures, and I'm like, Dude up in Philadelphia got a 10 by 20 with a brand new bedroom set, brand new dining room set for $225. I wanted to scream. That unit down here would have been $1,200. Easy. Easy. He got it for 200 bucks. He's like, yeah. And I've got all these stories and then I discovered something. There are certain markets that are nowhere competitive as the major ones. And when I wrote the book, that was a concern. I'm like, is this going to work everywhere? Because Atlanta... It's a different kind of place. Is this going to work in New York? Is this going to work in California? And what I come to find out is because Atlanta is such a hyper competitive place because we have people coming from Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, and all parts of Georgia to the auctions in Atlanta because there's so many. So it's always been competitive. On my blog, I found a picture from 2006 of a crowd at an auction and I posted it up there. 
You can't even put all the people in the picture. They can't fit in the picture. I stopped counting at 80. This is like 2006. I didn't get out the business to 2009. So, because the thing is, even with a crowd, new people coming out, they don't know what they're doing. In the, you know, on there, uh, when the first crowd came out, and I bought a room. In the room was, you just saw the wheels in the, in the base of these chairs. But I knew exactly what those chairs were. And I was bending, and there was another guy, he saw a surfboard, and he was bending on the surfboard, I was bending on the chairs. The chairs were four Herman Miller Aeron chairs, size C. I knew from the base exactly what they were. And then I was like, ah, oh, he's crazy, he paid $450 for his gym. Bunch of new people, some of the regulars are like, well, you know, Glendon does that shit, you know, who knows? I sold those bitches for 600 bucks a piece. Surfboard, 425 on eBay. And there was the rest of the stuff. Knowledge. You have got to get the knowledge. No one's going to give it to you. You got to be hungry. It's like you just got to go out there and take opportunity and grab it by the neck and like you're mine. You got to do that shit. No, it's not going to be like, hi, I'm Opportunity. I'm here to greet you. Nice to meet you. I'm going to jump in your pocket and make you a lot of money. Get the fuck out of here. That shit's not realistic. That's one of the reasons so many people are not successful. Now, back to the original core theme of this video, thinking big. When I say thinking big, I'm not talking about a big house. I'm not talking about a big-ass car. I live very modestly. <laughs> I drive a 94 BMW. Why? Because it's cheap to fix, it's paid off, and it gets me where I need to in a, in a style that I find comfortable. I don't really even like the new ones because, you know, they keep messing up the design. But that's a choice. All that stuff. Thinking big is sitting down and not going, I'm going to build this business to make money. That's actually small thinking. I'm telling you. Because I created a life plan. This wasn't about just to make money to do this. This was about freedom. Let me tell you something. If you could create a business and you have the right financial education, which is very important because many people don't, and say in three or four years you make a net of $4 million. Or no, look, let's crank it down. $2 million net. Taxes paid. You sell a business. You've got $2 million. If you know what to do with that money, you'll never have to work a day again. You'll get, put it in municipal bonds. And they say it's paying 4%. Say it's paying 6 Let Let's cut it. Let's say it's paying 5%. That's a hundred grand a year minus 10%. Taxes, capital gains, because that's all you're paying because it's income from your investments. That's 90 G's a year. And you still have the two million after the 20 year period when it's over to leave to your kids or whatever. You've got to make some decisions about how you want to live your life before you do these businesses. Because, you know, I get people all the time. It's like, oh, I got money. I want you to be my consultant. I'm like, no, think about why you really want to do this. What are you really chasing? Because it's rarely money. And when I say people don't think big, I'm talking the whole life. Do you you want to get married? What kind of life do you want for your kids? I mean, all of that is thinking big. And also, at the auctions, I used to hear it all the time. It's like, hey, I'm not going to get a store. That's too much. Got to pay taxes. As a single proprietor, buying units by yourself, selling the stuff, you're going to be very limited on income. You can make a great income like that. You actually can. But you're not going to make the type of money I made. It ain't going to happen. Not going to happen. Why? Point of diminishing returns. If it's just you, you're screwed. And the way things are going right now, you, I have to change my position on uh, the partner's things because I had a partner which helped me make me very successful. She did a lot. But to grow, you've got to think bigger than where you are today. I can't really make it any plainer. I don't care if you're in a trailer, reading, looking at this video on your cell phone, because you don't have cable, and you just got the only internet access you have is on your phone, and a lot of people in that situation. I don't care if you're sitting in a house with a hole in the you have got to think bigger than your circumstances because this is how it works. What you think about, what you dwell on,
becomes your reality. Keep saying, this is too hard. I'm too old. I don't have enough talent. Your mind's going to be like, okay. All right, there's a book. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Old book. It's the bomb. You can get it on Amazon for like a buck or something. Get it. I highly recommend you get the book because you have to control your thought process. You have to control the things that you think about, the things that you tell yourself, and the things you put out in the universe. I sat down, and before I did this writing thing, I sold a lot of stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of everything that could be a distraction, and I'm going to dedicate my life to this for a year. That's called having a goal, executing, and not being immediately wedded to the outcome. You, you, you got to have some type of boundaries. It's like, you know, after a year, if this shit didn't work, I was going to be back out there. And it was going to be hard because I put out a lot of my secrets. Shit, I put all my secrets out. I would have been screwed. It's like, oh, that's what he's doing to me. Oh, he was running me up. Oh, that's his game. That's his ploy. But fortunately, you know what? Actually, I'm copping out. Not fortunately, but due to me sitting my ass at my desk, writing for eight to nine hours a day, getting headaches, fingers cramping up. It's why it happened because I worked my ass off and I had a goal. And I knew it was not going to be an immediate success. Fact, most businesses take two to five years before they start spinning off a serious profit. I'm not talking about internet businesses where, hey, this guy, he started this business six months ago. And uh, Beacon Brothers, the venture firm, is giving him $5 million. Oh, and a year later, he does an IPO, cashes out of $10 million. It happens. But why is that story so fascinating? Because it's atypical. That's not the norm. That's not the reality. The reality is you're going to start a business. You're going to work for a number of years. And then it's going to become successful. And then you can live that lifestyle. You have people who like that J.G. Whitworth. I want it now. It's my money and I want it now. No, bitches, it's not. It's not. <laughs> you have got to put out. Think big. Execute big. Plan big and work big. You are not going to be successful with just thinking big without those other components in the execution chain. That's the deal. Think big, plan big, execute big, work big. That will make you successful. I don't care whatever you're doing. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You know, if you don't want to do storage auctions, that's cool. It's not for everybody. But there's something you want to do. There's a business, there's an ideal. And you can make it happen if you prepare your life and stop acting like a scared little bitch. Because that's what I see when I see these comments. Oh, it's over. The heyday's over. I have a person who sent me an email yesterday who got a unit for 200 bucks and he's going to make three grand yesterday. So if it's over, why are people still making money? The, the market's saturated. There's a lot of foolishness going out there. There's a lot of chaos. But... As evolution has proven again, the strong will survive and the weak will perish. So you need to make a decision. Which team are you going to be on? Team strong or team scared little bitch? Oh, it's too hard. I don't want to work that hard. No, the world is so unfair. Oh, oh. I don't want to be on team scared little bitch. Fuck that. I don't want to be on that. No, because... You're essentially saying you're a victim of circumstance and you have no power to facilitate change. You might as well just turn around, bend over, spread all your cheeks wide as you can and say, life, just fuck me real hard. Go ahead, life. Don't even use any Vaseline. Just do it. And then kill yourself because you ain't worth living because I'm going to get into some other stuff. Um, you know, if, if you didn't know, I'm black. And this is my view on the slavery thing. I feel that the people who survived all that bullshit were incredibly strong. And my legacy from them is strength. The only the strongest of the strong made it through that shit. And those are my ancestors. And I'm proud as fuck of them. It's not like because, you know, it's history. Every culture in the world has some fucked up history. There's rape, there's wars, there's incest, there's this one tribe that encased this other tribe. That is history. It is, the, it, that's the way it is. And bitching about it, and tr you can't change the past, but you can move forward and build a brighter future. 
So that's my whole deal. You know, those folks, my peeps were strong motherfuckers, made it possible for me to be the person I am today. I got my intellect, my physical gifts, because I'm fairly strong. I mean, I go in the gym and I'm, I don't work out for a year in a week. I'm benching 200 a month. I'm at three. And I, it's just natural. I got it from them. And I'm going to say this. Jimmy the Greek, who got in trouble all the years, was saying about those big... He was telling the truth. It is ugly. It is sad. But black folks in slavery were bred for specific purposes. That's the reason that the NBA and the NFL are full of athletic freaks. That's the history. And, you know, I'm, I'm guaranteed Shaq ain't going, you know what? I'm sad. I got these jeans that made me seven feet tall and made me hundreds of millions of dollars. Man, set my people. He ain't saying that. He's like, thank you, folks. And that's the reality. Take the bullshit and make something better. Because I'm talking to you, my new troll. Because that's something else. The people who come in and hate on the, the videos, they keep coming back. <laughs> I'm like... I, someone's got a whack channel I look at. I never go back. So obviously you're getting something because people do not sit at a dinner table to eat if they're not fed. It does not happen. It just doesn't. So instead of like letting this little bullshit knock you off, go for your dreams. Chase them hard. And if you fail, learn from that and move forward. Because this is something I had to learn how to do. If you examine your life, 90% of the time, things go as planned. You get up in the morning. You go to work. You work X amount of days. You get a check. It's a system, and it happens. But what do people want to concentrate on when shit goes sideways? It doesn't matter if the other 364 days went fine. That 365th day that was fucked up, you'll remember it and talk about it for years. Completely ignoring the beauty of of life that's the majority of your life so that's my message to you think big plan big execute big and work big and you'll be successful stop looking for the immediate gratification and for the people who don't have two nickels to rub together I've been there in the way that you're gonna get not nickels not quarters but some paper that rubs together is having a plan, having some courage. There's a wonderful article about Amanda Hawking. She's 26 years old. She's a writer. She tried to get published for years, and she started putting her books on YouTube. Not YouTube. I'm sorry. She started putting her books on Kindle, and she writes really fast, and she just put them out there and built this fan base, and she's selling hundreds of thousands of books a month. I mean, she's already made a few million dollars because she kept at it. Check her out. Amanda Hawking, go to her blog and read her latest post. She was, the, you know, she kept working. She, had, she said, I'm going to do this. However it works out, I'm going to do this. And you need to develop that mindset because all this whining and bitching and <laughs> life is so hard. I used to work in a hospital. I have seen people with cancer, incurable diseases, who were in agony, exhibit dignity and courage, but I know they are racked with pain. And if you're sitting there at home in your nicely heated home on your fairly new computer watching this video, you really don't have shit to complain about because the biggest gift is your health. If you're healthy and you can work and plan, you can do the rest. I've seen it. I've actually, I've experienced it. So, stop with the bitching. Just stop. It's not, it's not a good look, homie. It's not a good look. I'm just, I mean, really. Because it's not going to move you from where you are to where you want to be. All right. This is Glendon with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions.